When it originally came out on the PlayStation 2, Okami wowed gamers with its astonishing visuals and beautifully designed gameplay engulfed in Japanese folklore. Although its game director Hideki Kamiya admitted to Okami being heavily inspired by the Legend of Zelda series, it never took away from the experience that Okami delivered. Over the years, the title was re-released on the Wii, in HD for the PS3, and most recently on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and now the Nintendo Switch for $20. Okami takes place in historic Japan in a world completely surrounded by Japanese legend and folklore. Long ago, the god Shiranui and the brilliantly skilled Nagi worked together to take down the evil eight-headed Orochi. The battle brought an era of peace for the Kamiki villagers. That era of peace prospered until we get to the present where Sakuya, a descendant of Nagi who doesn't believe in the legend, broke away the seal keeping Orochi at bay. It's at this moment that Amaterasu, the sun goddess and reincarnation of the long ago legend Shiranui, comes forth to help find Orochi's curse. Accompanied by a tiny little bug named Isun who is a talented artist, you must gather the powers of the celestial brush and take down Orochi's curse once and for all. Okami's story is a lovely immersion into Japanese legends that completely captivated me. As someone that studied Japanese and traditional culture of Japan in college, it was really cool to go see references to things I studied before in this game. It's actually one of the very same reasons why I'm looking forward to Ghost of Tsushima on the PlayStation 4. With that said, the story can still be a bit disjointed. Okami is a game with a lot of writing and you can certainly feel it. In some moments it's necessary to explain the legends that the game is based on, but in other situations it completely kills the pacing of the story. That's not to say the story itself is bad, I found it to be immersive and enchanting, like a living storybook being portrayed right in front of me. Its pacing may be a little bit off, but getting past those long periods of reading certainly rewards you with one of the most interesting third-person action adventure games in the industry. Filled with a cast of interesting and humorous characters, although admittedly some jokes haven't aged too well, Okami still remained to be a joyful ride that I was happy to go on once again. Okami is a third-person action-adventure game that has you exploring new worlds, gathering powers, and helping those in need. You play as Amaterasu, the reincarnation of the sun goddess who must travel across Japan, seeking out the celestial brush powers. These are skills that can perform miracles like spawning up bombs, cutting through objects, and making the sun rise. These miracles are used in just about every aspect of the gameplay, whether it's in battles, environmental puzzles, or in cutscenes. At just about any point in the game, you can press the shoulder button to activate the unique gameplay mechanic that has you drawing symbols to activate miracles. Using the analog stick, you can draw out shapes with your celestial brush to do a number of different miracles. On the Nintendo Switch, you can even use the handy touchscreen instead. It's a nifty feature for this new on-the-go version of Okami that makes the handheld version of the game feel like the pinnacle version, despite not being at 4K resolution like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Aside from the Celestial Brush, Amaterasu can also equip weapons that completely change up her fighting style. As you find new weapons throughout the campaign, you can equip them to her primary or sub-weapon slot to fight with. Having a weapon in a different slot completely changes its performance. It was really amusing to mix and match the different weapons to see how it can be used with one another, along with the combos that each could perform. For example, as a main weapon, the Divine Retribution acts as an offensive move, but as a sub-weapon, it actually becomes a shield. Every new weapon brought me excitement to experiment with and find my perfect weapon pair. The execution of this battle system was fantastic and easy to grasp with. If there is one complaint I have to give though, it'd be that it's way too easy. I don't recall ever dying in this game, and that's just because you're so well suited throughout the game for battles. Now that covers the combat, but these tools are also used for so much more than that. As a god, you're often tasked with helping out people in need, even if they don't necessarily thank you or think it's you helping them. For example, someone may think that their special dance is helping bring back the Sakura back to life. Well, that may not actually be the case because really it's just you using the celestial brush to perform miracles. The humans may not know it or believe it, but let's not ruin their imagination. It's in instances like this that you'll have to use your god powers to solve both easy and at times more challenging puzzles that use critical thinking. Usually though, they're just as easy as the boss fights because Okami overall is a game that really likes to guide you. It can almost be a knockback of sorts because here's a game that drops you in such a unique world perfect for exploration. However, before you're able to go run around and explore everything to your heart's content, Okami likes to nudge you to work on the next story mission. It's like a watchful parent that likes to tell you how to play on a giant park playground. It's fun to play on the playground, but I can go without the nagging. Okami's art style is incredibly charming and so unlike most games today. If anything, it partially looks like Wind Waker, but even then, it's not one-to-one -one with the art style. 
To be blunt, Okami is in a league of its own, looking like an old Japanese painting come to life. It's extraordinary to see and even more alluring to play in. Playing either on a PS4 Pro or on an Xbox One X bumps the game's resolution all the way up to 4K at the locked 30 frames per second. It continues to be a beautiful game despite being a decade old at this point. There's even an option to toggle a 4x3 option if you want to relive the game in its native aspect ratio on the PS2. As for other platforms such as the original PS4, Xbox One, or the Nintendo Switch, Okami runs at 1080p 30 with a mostly stable frame rate across the board. If you switch over to the handheld mode on the Switch, the resolution gets dropped down to 720p but continues to look impressive since it's actually the Switch's native display resolution too. In a difficult way, I was hard pressed on what was a better combination, Okami in 4K on a TV or being able to enjoy the game both on TV or on the go with pretty good resolutions. Ultimately, both experiences were just as stunning as one another. While its art style helps sell Okami as a living art book experience, its music really delivers that message with an outstanding soundtrack that takes you back to Sengoku period Japan. To this day, I think if a child asks you to read them a bedtime story, you should just go ahead and play them the prologue to Okami with its soundtrack playing in the background because nothing is going to beat that. What can be beaten and can surely use some improvement is the voice acting in this game, or whatever that sound is that's playing when people talk. It sounds like Walmart bargain bin Animal Crossing voice acting. It's muffled, compressed, and just doesn't sound good. Bearing that in mind with just how long these conversations can get, and it can become a blemish on a beautiful piece of art. Luckily, there are some audio improvements with this new version of Okami, and it comes specifically with the Nintendo Switch version. With the Switch, Okami now supports HD Rumble, and it's probably the best representation of the technology. Capcom did something brilliant here and lets you switch between the rumble found on other consoles and the HD rumble on the Switch for a direct comparison. You can quite literally feel the individual footsteps of characters to the attacks they're performing right in the palm of your hands. The difference is enamoring, and if you were skeptical of the technology before, I think this is going to win you over. Even at 12 years old, Okami has never looked better. On the PS4 and Xbox One, the experience not only transitions over perfectly, but gets improvements visually that look absolutely stunning on current 4K TVs. Even on weaker hardware like the Nintendo Switch, the experience feels fantastic at 1080p on TV and 720p in handheld mode because now for the first time you have that great Okami gameplay without any noticeable downgrades on the go. It's like when you first played Breath of the Wild on the Switch, it feels like it shouldn't be possible, but it is. Ultimately, at $20, you get one of the best action-adventure games of all time with improvements across the board for all modern platforms. Despite the pacing of the story and the voice acting not aging so well, Okami is just as memorable now as it was back in 2006. If I had to give it a score, I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10. That does it for my review of Okami HD for the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Sorry it's a little bit late, but hopefully you still enjoyed it, and if you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more reviews just like this every single week, and you can check out my most recent videos on the left side of the screen. Thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.